Okay, hello. Today's little project, we've got a Technics SLPG300. This is the third in the range, so you had the 100, the 200, 300. The 300 has track access buttons, uh, and on the back, nothing too exciting here. No digital optical out, just a synchro edit button and your standard RCA. So there you go. So this unit would probably have been from memory from about 1990 to 1991. And power this up, see what happens. Okay, we've got Science of Life, which is excellent. So I picked this up for 15 Aussie dollars at a clearing house and like a garage sale basically. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Okay. Alright, so she's a dead. Can't hear the spindle motor, can't hear um, anything like that. So let's open it up and see if we can work out what is going on. At least the drawer is nice and smooth. Pretty simple to, dis to dismantle this thing. Four screws, one in the back. Okay, so still got this thing powered up. So, pop the CD in. <clears throat> and what we're looking for is some signs of life from the mechanism here when I press the close button. All right, nothing, nothing from the spindle motor and the sled motor, which drives the mechanism back and forth. I can't hear that moving at all. So there's a couple of micro switches that control the motion of that. And there's also the track one sensor, which will uh, make sure that the laser is in the, the inner position before it allows the spindle mo uh, motor to start. So these are just mechanical interlocks. Uh, we'll have a look at that. I'll, ta I'll take this whole mechanism out. Still see a little bit of original grease there. It feels pretty good actually. And we'll see if the spindle motor or the sled motor uh, are working. We can put some voltage on them, about 3 volts. And, uh, and we'll see, uh, <laughs> see what we can find with this thing. Make sure it's safe. This just will wiggle out. Just pinch it from each side, wiggle it up. And feel that coming out. And there we go, that's free. And now I can start to dismantle the whole sled mechanism and pull it out from the front. Let's see where these screws are coming from. All right, so that's the spindle drawer and the logic controls for the spindle drawer, <coughs> which also connect. Uh, they'll also connect to the two micro switches which are in here. So I think they're probably going to be okay. I will check those, uh, but mainly what I'm looking for are the sled and the all the lifting mechanisms that are up underneath this board, this logic board here. So I'm just going to pop these screws off. Put them somewhere safe. I'm now getting a collection of screws, so I've got to remember where everything goes. Got these little clips at the side here. Get a flathead for that. Now there's a ribbon cable under here. I'll just show you that. So as you lift this up, and then get access to, I can see both the motors there. So there's the sled. There's a sled motor, and then that is the spindle motor. So I'm going to put voltage onto those. Fire up my power supply, bring that down to about 3 volts. We don't want to cook this thing. In fact, I'll see if I can do it and leave this control board here. So I'll just chalk that up with a bit of something, and then uh, put manually put voltage on those two motors and see if I can get some life out of them. Right, so let's put some voltage onto this stepper motor. Sled motor, I'm sorry, and see if it, we can get that to come to life. Okay, so it's pretty tired, so uh, now I'm going to try the spindle motor. I can get these probes in here, and that is spinning quite freely. So I'd say the problem is either in the micro switches, the track one sensor switch, which is a micro switch, or uh, it's in this sled motor that's just very, very tired and won't spin. So I'll pull it apart and see if I can lube it up. So from the other side, I'm just going to try and pull off these little connection tabs. There you go. They do come off and then ah, there we go. That opens up this kettle of worms from this side. So this gives me access into 
this and then I'll try and pull off the sled drive and uh, pull the sled motor out and lubricate that up and also put a little bit of grease on the the screw here for the sled drive All right so there's one screw here so take this screw out here lift this out like so and I've got to work out how to get some oil on the back end of the motor and on the front end of the motor there so a few drops of oil and hopefully that'll be enough so this is all I'm using I'm just gonna put a drop on the back and front of the motor and see if I can work that in so this is the back of the motor there is a tiny little hole there uh, that is specifically designed to get a bit of oil in so got to be super careful I don't flood the whole thing it's one of the tiniest drop there and then of course you gotta spin it spin this around but turn it around the other way and try and get some on this end of the motor drive as well. And now that I've done that, I've still got my power supply running, plus and minus. Okay, that's spinning pretty nicely. But I'll just work that through, reverse the polarity, run that loop through the other way, and also put a little bit on the shaft. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna put a tiny dab of silicon grease on this racking shaft here, a little worm drive. It's actually quite a lot of friction in there, so I'm not quite sure why that is so tight. Okay, everything's lubed up. Now, next thing I'm going to test for is on the other side. This is the track one. Let's see if I can point to it. It's very, very small. That is the track one micro switch there. So that's what. The device will be pressing in and so these are the two contact pins so I'll check those for continuity which you can track back to this plug here so I'll put some old bits of wire in there some resistor wire and check that for continuity okay I've got some contacts on there one and a half ohms so that micro switch is good all right, check the other micro switches. Okay, so when you're putting this back together, if, like me, you've pulled the whole thing out to lubricate it, you've got to make sure that these fingers here go back on the this slider shaft. I'm just going to throw a little bit more silicon lube on that. Looks all right, but as they say, can you ever have enough? And, yeah, the answer is actually yes, you can. So... Use my fingers, uh, my tweezers, I'm sorry, pick that up, slide that on there, locate that, seat that in, that's good. Now I've got to put this motor back in, so that's all lubed, and that's got to sit in absolutely square. Okay, to get this seated back in, there's a little receptacle, little hole, little ferrule right in there. You've got to get that in first, otherwise, this motor mechanism will not go in. So this is seated in there properly. I've given this a few turns by hand to make sure it's actually meshed with the worm gear and it is so I'm going to put this tiny little screw back in and put it back together so there's only the one screw that holds that in you have to have magnetic screwdrivers doing this sort of work just to see if that works and it does you can see that all right so flip this bad boy over make sure you retrieve these plugs so they can go back into their right spots and two, and the next thing to check are the two sled micro switches. So I've tilted that back over, and I'm just going to take the screw out from the top plate. Look at that, it's actually quite a long screw. And that should just lift out, and it does. Not too much crap on that, which is good. Basically, impossible to tell what condition the laser is in. There she blows there, and what I'm looking for are the two micro switches so that when the draw slides out in this position they activate and tell the logic circuits the position that the drawer is in okay so the micro switches that we're talking about are under here I'll just show you uh, these are the two micro switches here so basically they tell the logic controller the uh, the position of the draw uh, basically in or out so I'll just do some continuity on those and see if they're working they might need some deoxid Oh, look, I may as well take this whole draw mechanism out. Oh, that is quite tight. At least I know I'm the first one that's been in here. Take the top tray out. 
we will be visiting that later because I'll put a, bit, a little bit of lube on those gears but I still don't know if the laser on this is stuffed but first things first there are the two micro switches there so I've got to put contacts on those make sure that they're okay in fact I might just spray a little bit bit of deoxid on those uh, before I even put that back together just to save me the trouble okay first one's good two ohms but that's probably enough to contact two ohms okay not great two ohms all right so while we're here it's going to put a tiny bit of lube on the upper and lower rack and pinion there okay to put this back together pretty straight and now while I've got this open we may as well have a look at how this works so these are the two switches so this is the tray mechanism and you can see it lifting up so that will obviously be in the closed position and that is in the open position righto so <clears throat> I've got everything back together it takes a little bit of fiddling around and what you'll find when you're trying to put this tray back together is that you can't put it back because there are plastic slider clips um, particularly this one on this side uh, you can't put this mechanism back together in the closed position. You've got to put it back together when it's in the open position. So what that means is it's got to go back together when it's in this position here. And note the position of the slide-out tray drawer. And of course this retracts to give it the telescopic feature. See that? So that distance is closing. And then when it comes, comes together, that is the position that you're looking for to... Uh, put this tray back together and then the tray lifts up so I'll pop that back inside here we'll power this on all right that is a very very good sign excellent that's a really good sign so that's hunting for a disc so let's put one in now this probably won't work uh, with the platen off so I'm going to put the platen weight back on and then we'll try and fire this thing up so here's a little tip. When you're putting this back together, this screw has to be out because that screw actually sits in there like that. And the other little tip is that when you're pulling this, pulling this back, that's the position it should go in. But you'll see that it can't go in because these little fingers here uh, hold the tray in place to stop it uh, basically tilting down too much so you've got to push the drawer in slightly like this you've got to push the drawer in like so and you'll see that when this comes out all the way that these little fingers hook into the top of the plate and stop the drawer from uh, flopping down too much. So let's rest that down in its seated position. All right. Power this on. And the micro switches should tell it that it's not open and it's not closed. Put some power on. Okay, great. Now we'll open it. See how we go. And we've got a reading disc. Okay, so if I press play. Oh ho! Signs of life. How good is that? What I want to try is a very, very poor condition home burnt disc. Here we go, greatest number one singles. God knows what that's got on it. Let's see if this reads. All right. Fantastic. So we'll see if we can get some audio out of this thing and then it'll be job done. Right, so I've got my RCAs hooked up to my dodgy little garage stereo, good old Panasonic. 
it's actually quite a nice little unit. Anyway, let's see how we go. See what's on the greatest number one singles. All right. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Press random. Okay, let's prove it's not a fluke. We'll try another disc. Alright, so that's working pretty well. Perfect, alright. Put the rest of the screws in, always spin them backwards, just one turn so that they click and so that you're not cutting a new thread. So anti-clockwise till you hear it click, and then you can screw them in. Great, now I can put the case on. Done.